Now, with the same idea of the kinetic theory, looking at molecules and how they behave, we're going to switch gears from gases to liquid. Liquids are very much related to gases, okay? Uh, but they're different. Their density is greater. Uh, they don't have any definite shape. You know, the water can change shape like you saw here. I can just take this out and all of a sudden the water changes shape. But the volume didn't change, okay? Now, a couple important things we want to look at. First one is called dynamic equilibrium. Equilibrium has something equal in it. The question is, what is equal? And equilibrium exists at the phase changes. Okay, so for instance, if I take some water and I add heat to it, I heat it up. Okay, we know eventually water is going to start bubbling down here in the bottom because that's where the heat is. That's called boiling. And those bubbles, because they're gas now, are much less dense than the liquid. They're going to float to the surface, and they're going to escape off. And actually, when they're at the surface escaping, that's called evaporation. So you can see the difference between boiling, that comes from where the heat source is, to evaporation, which comes from the surface. And we compare that to boiling point, where boiling point is when the temperature levels off and only potential energy is increasing. The kinetic energy stays the same until the liquid changes completely to a gas. Now this, what you're looking at, is an open system, okay? So the gas can not only boil to the surface, but it can just escape to the room. And so evaporation takes place. And we know that if we were to increase the surface area of the water, you know, throw it on the floor, it'll evaporate much quicker. If we were to heat it up, it'll evaporate much quicker. If there's currents blowing on it, it'll evaporate much quicker. And you feel this when you take a shower and you come out of the shower, especially in the winter, you got the breeze from the room, or, you know, you really feel a lot colder. Why? Because there's evaporation taking place. The evaporation is causing the water to turn into vapor, and it cools you down. Okay, but how about if we change the system? Let's change the system now. See the difference? Now I've got a closed system. And again, I start with water, and again, I'm going to heat it. Okay, delta H. I heat this up. Again, bubbles will form here all over the place. They're going to quickly go to the surface. And again, they will escape. And what you're going to find is over a short period of time, the water level is going to decrease. There's my original. I'm going to dot it. And eventually what's going to happen is I'm going to have molecules escaping the gas. Let's say two. But I'm also going to have gas molecules that are returning to liquid. Let's say these two. So you notice that there's a gas molecule leaving, but there's one returning. There's another one leaving, there's another returning. Two leaving, two returning. That's the equilibrium. When the rate of boiling equals the rate of condensation, we call that dynamic equilibrium. It's dynamic because it's not the same gas molecule. For instance, now this one could escape where that one could return. But it's always going to be the same amount. If two leave, two must come back. Dynamic equilibrium. Okay? And then we come to something that's called vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is another intensive property, which means we can use it to identify it. Every substance, every liquid, has its own vapor pressure. It means literally the pressure to boil or the pressure to go from liquid to gas. And so in the notes, we've talked about this, uh, and you should look at the notes. But if we had temperature, for instance, we'll just do a quick comparison. And if it was at zero degrees, water has a vapor pressure of about 4.6 uh, torr which is very, very low. And at 100 degrees, at standard pressure, or in other words, the normal boiling point of water is 760 torr, that's standard pressure, and it would boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Let's compare that with alcohol. Alcohol's vapor pressure at zero is 12.2, so it's also very low. Here, however, it's, eight, uh, sorry, it's 1,700 torr way higher than water. So if you go to 760 here, I'll just I'll let you know what it is, right around 70 degrees, about 70 degrees 
for alcohol, the vapor pressure, in other words, the desire to boil is at 70 rather than 100. So alcohol boils much sooner than water. Then we have another one called ether. This used to be the analgesic or the anesthesia that was used. Uh, its vapor pressure is 185 at zero. And the 760, or standard pressure point, is right around 30 degrees Celsius. Room temperature is 25. So if you set ethyl ether out in the room, very quickly it's going to evaporate off. Why? Because its vapor pressure, its pressure to go from liquid to gas, is very, very high. Now we can look at these three substances using vapor pressure, and we can talk about a lot of different things. Water is much more stable. The molecules holding water together must be stronger. Why? Because it takes so much longer to boil water than it does to boil ether. Ether wants to be a gas. It's pressured to be a gas at a much, much lower temperature. And that's where we get the concept of vapor pressure. Now, a question could be, can water boil at 70 degrees? Can water boil at 30 degrees, like ether? Can water boil at zero degrees? And the answer is yes, because the definition of boiling point is that the atmospheric pressure, the pressure pushing down on the liquid, holding the liquid in, remember we, sh the pressure holding the liquid in, remember there's gas bubbles forming down here, if this is heat, if the pressure is great enough, it holds those gas molecules in there. Maybe a few escape, but most of them aren't able to escape. However, what if we decrease the pressure and we make it much less? Then the gas can escape much easier, which means at a lower temperature. So for instance, water normally boils at 100 degrees. But if we decrease the atmospheric pressure, instead of pushing down so hard, we lighten that pressure Water can boil at much lower temperature. In fact, water can boil at zero degrees. If you go into outer space, the pressure is zero tor out there. And if we don't have a spacesuit on, we will boil. All the water in our body will boil off because the vapor pressure of water at zero is 4.6, which is actually even greater than what the pressure in outer space is.